Welcome back Oakland County EMS providers. This is section 6 for the protocol implementation education. This section is pediatric cardiac treatment protocols. I'm John Toit, the EMS system manager, and with me is Captain Gary Proctor of the West Bloomfield Fire Department. He is the EMS coordinator and he's also one of the co-chairs of the protocols committee. So I'm here with Captain Gary Proctor from the West Bloomfield Fire Department. He is our protocol chair for the OCMCA. Captain Proctor, tell me all about 6.1 and the changes that we have for pediatric cardiac arrest. So 6.1, it's had several changes to it. What you'll notice in it is it still has a fair amount of education in it, which is good. It gives us a reminder of what it is we need to do with these patients because fortunately, we don't run across a lot of pediatric cardiac arrests. So it's really important that you take some time and read through this protocol again. There have been, like I said, a lot of changes to it from previously. You'll notice that throughout here that they mentioned the MyMedic cards. And as you'll notice, the MyMedic cards have changed as well. And that's discussed elsewhere in these recordings. The MyMedic card, again, refers to the medications that are selected for pediatric cardiac arrest, amiodarone being the key one in there as far as the antiarrhythmic. Make sure that you review that portion of it as well. And then every protocol that is referred to elsewhere is labeled in here as far as what the protocol name is along with the reference number. So for example, vascular access 7.23 is listed in there. So it's a little bit easier if you have to refer to something else. But again, this particular protocol, a lot of changes to it. So please take some time to read through it. Remember, there is a lot of education in it but it's important stuff to review and make sure that you've got down because again, we don't have a lot of opportunity to practice our pediatric cardiac arrest, which is a good thing. And really a lot of the changes aren't to treatment, right, Gary? And most of them are to the structure of the protocol, but there are some things in here you'll want to take a look at. Yeah. And you'll see that through a lot of the protocols as you look through the new suite for 2024 is there isn't significant changes to the substance of them, it's changes to the structure of them. So the way that they're laid out, it's the same information in there, just in a different format and laid out a little bit more clearly, I think, in a lot of cases. Excellent. So the next one is pediatric symptomatic bradycardia, protocol 6.2. So 6.2, again, the important thing to remember here is the MyMedic cards are referenced in a lot of our protocols now. And you'll see that in that general treatment section there where it talks about pediatric patients being equal to or less than 14 years of age. So make sure that you utilize the appropriate MyMedic cards. The big changes to this one, if you go back up in towards the top, part number one where it discusses hypotension and it talks about infants from one month to a year and then children 2 to 10, and then for children greater than 10, what the systolic blood pressure is that defines hypotension. And then the other important change that you'll notice in here is, again, down in that general treatment section after it talks about the mimetic stuff. And this is a little bit of a change for people, where in the past it's been if the heart rate is less than 60, we just automatically go into CPR. Now what we want you to do is if the pulse is less than 60, confirm that, support the patient with adequate oxygenation and ventilation, and see if that makes a change. Again, you're not going to spend a whole lot of time doing this, but you want to see if that makes the difference. And if it's still less than 60, then you're going to start CPR if the patient remains symptomatic. And then on the last page of this one, it does talk about continuously monitoring for pulses if they're not present. It does refer you back to 6.1, which is that pediatric cardiac arrest protocol. And the thing you see on all the kid ones, keep them warm. Yeah, absolutely. Keep them warm. And everybody should know this by now, but we got rid of those warming blankets that came out from the state several years ago due to various issues. So make sure that you've got adequate blankets and that you've got heat packs that you can protect from skin to heat pack contact with the patient, but that's an option for keeping them warm as well. So the next one is pediatric tachycardia, protocol 
you're not going to see a lot of highlights in this one because really the structure has changed. But Gary, is there anything else we really need to know on this one? Not really. Again, like you said, it's the structure has changed. I think the information is pretty much the same as what we're used to seeing in there. Again, keep in mind that it does mention the mimetic cards in here, like you'll find through all the pediatric protocols. And again, referring to that less than or equal to 14 years of age. And keep in mind that your mimetic cards have changed. The other nice change to every protocol that you'll see is the reference protocols that are listed in there all have the reference number associated along with the name of the protocol. So it's easier to find when you have to look up something else because you're just not quite sure what it is you should be doing for that patient. Excellent. The last one in this section, and this is a short section, the shortest section that we have, the last one is protocol 6-4, return of spontaneous circulation. This section used to be nice and short. It used to just be three protocols, and now we've added a whole extra protocol. But this really isn't a new protocol. All we've done is we've taken and moved ROSC for pediatric patients from Section 1 to Section 6. The big thing that you'll find in here that's really different, though, is it refers to Protocol 4.9, which is the Pediatric Crashing Patient Impending Arrest Treatment Protocol, which is completely new. And you'll find that there's an adult version of that protocol as well. So please make sure you're familiar with that protocol. Again, reference to the mimetic cards and that less than or equal to 14 years of age. And then it also talks about monitoring waveform and tidal CO2 in here as well. And you'll find that through a lot of protocols now. And this one does have a target range in there of 35 to 45. And again, it does refer you off to 7.24 if you have more questions about that end title CO2 monitoring. Not necessarily a new protocol. It does have some additions to it from when it was in Section 1. But it's really just been moved from Section 1 to Section 6 with a couple of small additions to it. And that end tidal CO2 monitoring, Gary, that's not a suggestion anymore. That's not a consider. That's a do it. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll find that in a lot of them now where we talk about end tidal CO2 is it's really not a suggestion. This is what you're going to do. All right. Well, Gary, thank you very much. And we'll see you in Section 10. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us for Section 6. The next section is Section 7, Procedure Protocols. We'll see you there. And again, if you have any questions, contact qi at ocmca.org.